Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about organizing and saving effects presets. Now, if you've used any kind of effects in Adobe Premiere Pro, you know they can create cool looking things and audio and video. But if you need to make them over and over again, and you've got a perfect effect, then saving presets is a good idea. Chances are, if you've saved your presets, you might have an untidy presets folder. I want to talk to you about organizing, saving, exporting, and importing, and how to get them in the right order. Because if you don't name things correctly, you could have trouble trying to find them. So first of all, I'm just going to make a preset for anyone that doesn't know what they are. So let's have a look. Okay, so I've got some surfing clips here from ArtGrid, and let's say I wanna add an effect to this guy, and not just an effect, but an animated effect. So down on the bottom, all the way across here, you might see effects. If you don't, you might need to open this up, and you might need to move these around. I'm gonna close this by clicking these little Hamburger menus, these flyout menus are very useful and they hold information. One fairly new thing is this new dynamic Lumetri presets preview. I just want to show you that if I open up my presets, I've saved some Lumetri looks here with Kodak settings. And a really good idea is to put them on an adjustment layer so they have a certain look. And you don't have to put it on all of these clips. I'm going to put it on an adjustment layer. And here you get to preview what they what they will look like. So I'll drag that on there and there it is. When you select whatever clip or adjustment layer in the effects controls, that's where the effect shows up. Now there's no animation on this. There, there really shouldn't in a, in a look like this, but that's where they show up. And I, I always find that with new users, they get a little bit confused about the effects and the effects controls panel. The effects are where the effects are, where you apply them. The effects control panel is where you change the effects. Pretty simple. Now, when you replace when you drag on a new look like this, watch, I'm gonna grab this one and drag it on, it actually adds to this. So you really have to delete the previous one by selecting it and, and tapping the delete key. If it's not in motion or opacity or time remapping, if it isn't one of those effects, then dragging a new effect adds to it, which could cause you problems, especially if you have a, a couple of different effects that are tweaked a little bit. Okay, so let's get back to making one for this guy here. So I'm gonna do a little lens flare. I'll go to my effects and I'll type in flare and there's generate lens flare. When you have a clip selected, if you double click, you'll apply it. Now, one rule of thumb I always use with the lens flare is this lens flare has been around in After Effects and Photoshop and Premiere Pro forever, and it looks like a pre-baked uh, lens flare. So I always go down to this one. This one looks a little bit different, and you can change the position. So the idea here is I'm going to animate the position of that lens flare. So let's have a look. So he is going over that way. So as he goes over that way, I'm going to move it the opposite way. So I'll add a keyframe there at the beginning. And then I'll drag this over to the left. And then I'll just drag that keyframe to the end. So there's my little effect animation. It just moves from one side to another. Okay, so if I want to save that, notice that you can click on the name of an effect. I'll select that, right click, and save the preset. And I'll call that Moving Flare. And there are three choices, scale, anchor to in, anchor to out. Scale means that if this was an animation that took one second and you put it on a clip that's twice the duration, it would automatically scale to two seconds, which would make sense for this kind of an animation because you wanted to span the whole clip. Anchor in and anchor out is good for 
a look that you have for a certain effect, like a blur in. I have a half a second blur in or a one second blur in and you always want it to be one second, then you would anchor it in. And you can also give yourself a description down to the bottom. So when I click OK, I'm gonna delete this. And if we look at the top here in presets, we'll see moving flare. So I removed it from this guy. You can't double click a preset to add it. You do have to drag them. But now I've got that there and I could do that to another clip and another clip. And if I had 10 clips selected, I could drag it on one and it would apply it to all of them. You can apply these on adjustment layers and have one more look here. I can actually select multiple things. I'm holding down the control key on Windows, command on Mac and selecting multiple, right click and you can save a whole recipe of effects and reuse those. That's great. You should be using uh, presets because they really do make things easier. I use them anytime I'm deep inside a project and maybe it's a color setting or a sharpening or something that I'm doing over and over again because the footage is all within the similar shoot. So the colors are similar that once I fix the, the skin tone of that one, uh, I'll just save a, quickly save a preset. Uh, and if I'm smart enough, I'll save it into a new folder and I'll call it the project name or the scene or the day, something to remind me of what it is. Okay, so I've got them. They are all up at the top. And whenever you're working with these presets, you'll notice that there are Lumetri presets and then audio effects, video, audio transitions, video effects and transitions. And the presets are up at the top and you'll notice they're different because they have these little stars above them. Okay, but if you want to organize these so they're a little bit easier, you can create these new folders. And there's a custom bin down here, which you don't want. The custom bin will show up down at the bottom. So if you click on the little flyout menu, you can create a new presets bin right there. And when you do that, you don't get a chance to name it. It's actually down here and it's always starting alphabetically in the letter P, presets bin zero one. And if you made another one, it was zero two, zero three. So I wanna rename this. So just clicking on it, I'll rename it. And I'll rename this one dash. Collins presets. And what you might hope happened if you rename this with a one is that alphanumerically, it would have popped to the top of the list. But I haven't put anything in there yet. The presets are still outside of there. There they are. Now I'm gonna maximize this by hitting my tilde key. On a North American keyboard, it's the tilde key, but you can, uh, maximize this panel here. And it just gives me a little bit more room. So I'm gonna select all of these, again, by holding down the Control key on Windows, Command key on Mac, selecting all of these. And then there's my preset folder, I'll drag it down. Now when I open it up, all of my presets are in there. So let's talk about exporting and importing, and I think I can get it to move if I delete it and re-import it. All right, so with this selected, if I right click on it and choose export presets, I'm going to export this out. Now I wanna show you, I'll call this my presets, and I'm not going to name it one dash colon. I'm gonna name it something completely different, just my presets, and I'm going to stick it right there. Okay. Now I'm going to delete that. So I've deleted everything out of here. Now I'm going to import presets. My presets, open that up and look where it is. It went to the top. I have no idea why it does that. Um, I thought quitting it and starting would move it up, but it doesn't, you have to actually delete it but be careful, make sure you've exported this out. If these are really important presets, then I would have backed them up, you know, maybe to, to Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, something, um, and, and made them there. But you notice that the name 
has nothing to do with the file name on the desktop. It can be anything. The name of the, the presets folder is when I named it, when I created it before I exported it. So if you change it later, it's not going to work. Now here's the next goofy part. If I go and import again with nothing selected, so there, there's nothing here. Let me make sure I've got nothing selected. And I'll import that same presets, my presets. What do you think would happen? You know what I would expect to happen? I would expect the same operation that would happen on the desktop. If I had a folder and I dragged the exact same folder into a directory, you can't have the same folder. And typically a computer will add a zero one or dash one or something one at the end, two, three, four. Watch this. I'll <laughs> import them back in. Where the hell did they go? They went back inside there. Oh, and now look, underscore one was added in there. So Premiere Pro is not very smart that way. It will keep putting them in the folder where they were when you created them before you exported them. So it's not like you can direct them into a different uh, place. So I'm just gonna undo that. But that's how you organize your presets and export them and import them. Now you can have a full hierarchical list of presets. And for that, I'm gonna show you a set that I loaded, which is Yarl. And again, I'm going to make this his presets and he's got them in version four. I'll put a link in the description so you can download these. They're, they're free, let Yarl know how much you love them. And there's some amazing ones in here, like Camera Shake, very nice. Uh, but he, notice that he has folders in folders so that the name is Yarl's presets 4.0. And then in there is a bunch of audio, compositing, Deadpool handheld cameras. Look, for there's folders in folders in folders or bins or whatever, presets folder. So you can have this full hierarchical list and Yarl would have made all of that in the effects control panel and then he would have exported that out. And I bet you while he was making this, he was probably exporting a lot of safety versions just in case something blew up in Premiere Pro and you lost these. So very easy to import these and then they show up right there alphabetically. So there you go. There's uh, some tips on uh, exporting, saving and organizing and start to make use of all the powerful effects inside Premiere Pro because you can do some amazing, incredible stuff just with the built in effects in Premiere Pro. Hey, if you're new to video or video and you have found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? You can do that on videoreveal.com slash shop online where we've got a members section. We've got a bunch of free stuff. You can support us, uh, you, can down, um, you can donate once or monthly, any amount, and we do love all of our wonderful donors. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to keep you organized so you get the power of all these effects right at your fingertips.